The Fusion 360 Absolute Beginner Series was what many people were looking for to get started with Fusion 360. This video builds upon that. Now, if you're brand new to Fusion 360, click the link on the screen or down in the description area and go and check out the Absolute Beginner Series. If you've already watched it or you just want to jump in and start modeling up cool stuff, well, coming right up. Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. In this video series, we will dig a little bit deeper into the sometimes confusing sketch relations. We're also going to use what some people would call advanced features, but I think we're just going to slow it down. We can cut the forest so we can see the trees. And then I hope I can give you a little bit insight into the power of parametric modeling hopefully making your life a little bit easier when it comes to model things up inside of Fusion 360. But before we get started, as always, I really appreciate your comments and suggestions down in the comments area below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. With that, let's get going. So the end result is to model up this draw that has dovetails from start to finish. Now many of you have asked me to start completely from the beginning. So here we go. Now, two things that I want to highlight before we jump into the video, and that is number one, what we're going to use to model up uh, this draw is one of my favorite modeling techniques, and that is what I call the manufacturing technique. We're actually going to model up uh, this draw the same way you would do if you were going to make it. So if you had to make this draw, the first thing you would do was you would find your your pieces of wood and you will cut them to length and then you would slowly work your way through each process. We're going to use the same way to model this draw up and I find that extremely helpful um, whenever you got to model something up within Fusion 360. If you do have a manufacturing background or makeup background, I think you will find it extremely helpful to approach it the same way as if you had to make it in, in real life. The second thing I want you to think about is Take two seconds and just think about what a customer could come back and ask you for to change later on in your model. So for example, with the draw here, you might have the customer coming and saying that, well, you know, we want a draw that is a little bit wider, we want a draw that's a little bit taller. And with parametric modeling, we can actually kind of incorporate that into our design. That's one of the first things I want to show you. So what we're going to start out with is actually drawing up the different panels that is needed for the draw. So I'm going to start up by going up to our top component up here. I'm going to right click and say I'm going to create a new component. And I'm going to create a new component for each different piece of wood that we need within this assembly. So I'm going to create one that I'm first going to call front panel. I'm going to create another component. I'm going to call right panel, just slow left click and you get, you can type it in. That's a Windows command. I'm going to go up and right click again and create a new component. That's going to be the left panel. That's going to be one that's going to be the back panel. Then there, of course, also needs to be a bottom in this drawer. And then there's actually also a front cover on the panel, the one that you will actually see. Call that one cover panel. And this is also the knobs, but I actually going to wait creating those right now because I want to show you 
how you can bring those into the model later on because those could have been purchased those could have been drawn by somebody else or something like that so let's just wait with those right now so just to cover what we've done so far is we took a single part file and you'll actually see that now it has like an assembly icon over here we right clicked and created a new component. So now we have the different components, the different pieces of wood that we need uh, for this draw. You will see that we have a light next to them so we can turn the components on and off. Now, of course, there's nothing on the screen because we haven't drawn anything yet. And then you will also see what I call the fish eye looking at you over here. And that means whatever component is active. And <laughs> to be honest with you, this is probably where uh, you might make the biggest mistake that you forget to activate uh, the right component when you're drawing so our sketches and our features are contained within the right components. You just got to keep an eye on, make sure that that fish eye is activated right. So you see if I move up to the bottom panel, I can left click and I can activate that one. So that's just one of the things to, to be aware of that that fish eye is the right component is activated for the right component for the right component we're working on. So let's start out by going out in our shop and grab our different pieces of wood and cut them to the right length and size. So I'm going to start with the front panel up here. So I'm going to make that active. And within, if I hit the little arrow over here, you will see that that has its own origin. And if you watch the Absolute Beginner series, you know that I want to tie down my sketches to the origin. So I'm going to go over here with that front panel active, with the origin turned on, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click on the front face here and create a new sketch. It's going to go normal too and we get the sketch dialog palette over to the left over here. Now I'm going to hit the S key, so just like in the absolute beginners video series, we're going to use shortcuts whenever we can. And I am going to use the two point rectangle or corner rectangle over here. So I'm going to left click on that. And I'm just going to start sketching. I'm not going to be too concerned about tying things in yet. I'm just going to start sketching here a rectangle out. And you will see that automatically we get the dimensions for the height and the width of this piece of wood. So the height for this is going to be five inches. So in the absolute beginner series, we use millimeters. Let's do this one in inches. And so I'm just going to type in five and you will see that that gets put in there. Now to get it over to the length, I'm going to click the tab key on my keyboard and the length of this is going to be 28. And then I'm just going to hit OK or hit enter on my keyboard. And if I scroll out here, zoom out, middle mouse button scrolling out, we can see our first piece of wood. Now notice how the sketch is blue. This is what we talked about prior that we want these to become black. We want them to go from blue to black. And the reason it's blue is because it's not fully defined. If I grab a line here with my left mouse button, you can see that I can move it around. I need to tie that down to that origin over there. So I'm going to use the midpoint constraints. So I'm going to click on the triangle that meets midpoint. I'm going to click the line and then I'm going to click the origin. And just like that, our rectangle jumps over there, it turns black because now it's fully defined. This is extremely important that you get in the habit of doing this. Now with this, we can actually start extruding it out because now we got a black sketch. So I'm going to hit Q for press pull. And I'm going to select our rectangle. And we can, we can either go this way, we can go this way. I'm going to go minus, go in towards the draw. I'm going to go minus half an inch thickness. So there is our first piece of wood. We have a first piece of wood that is five inches tall and is 28 inches long and half an inch thick. Now with that, I'm gonna go home and turn off the origin because I really don't need that anymore. I'm gonna just collapse the tree here. And now I'm actually ready to start doing my next piece of wood to do that size. And that's gonna be the right panel. So I'm gonna go down and make that active so I'm going to click on the active fish eye. And as soon as I do that, notice how the, the front panel now becomes transparent, telling us that it's still there, but it's not the active component. So that's kind of like this nice feedback you get. 
So what I want is this draw to be parametric. What that means is that when I change one dimension, other components update to that dimension, making it easier, for example, when the customer asks for the draw to be taller, that we just change one dimension and every component updates. Now, if you are brand new to 3D modeling, this might seem a little confusing, especially when I know you're gonna sit with whatever you have to model up and you're trying to apply what I'm doing here. Don't get too bogged down about this. Just at least then know that this is what you're aiming for later down the road and you, you'll get it. So if nothing else, just be enlightened on that this is what is possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sketch the right panel over on this face over here on the front panel. To do that, I'm gonna first have to activate a sketch by clicking up on the ribbon bar. And then I'm gonna select right over here on that face and it's gonna go normal too. So now we can see the side of that first board from the front panel. Again, I'm gonna hit the S key and I'm gonna select the two point rectangle. And I'm gonna make sure that I snap into that corner of the front panel and start drawing out. Now you might here be tempted to type in the five inches for, for the height of this warp board, but I really wanna make sure that everything is automatically tied together. So I'm actually just gonna place, place this sketch right out here in space, and you will now see here that I can grab that corner and move that triangle. And then I'm gonna use a relationship to tie these two edges together. So I'm gonna go in here and use what is called a collinear, I'm going to select that one. I'm going to select the blue line and select the edge of our front panel. And just like that, those two gets tied together. I'm going to hit the escape key to get out of the, co the collinear command. You can see that around my mouse cursor, I kind of have that collinear icon. But as soon as I hit escape once, I'm out of it. You will see we still have our length here is still open. We can still draw this. It's still blue. So we still have to put the dimension on there. So I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to change the depth of this draw to be 15.5. Now this sketch is fully defined. It's turned fully black. So now we're ready to press pull that command. However, I have a rule that I like to share with you. And that is before you do any press pull, make sure that every other com uh, component is hidden so it's not visible on the screen. And the reason for that is that whatever is visible will be affected by that cut. And that can kind of screw you up as you're modeling. So this is a good habit that before you start doing the press pull, turn all your other components off. You will see me do this through this. So repetition is key. So I'm gonna hit Q for press pull. And I'm gonna make sure that I select both rectangles here because the software is actually aware of that front panel is there and we use that. And I'm also gonna make this one go inward so we couldn't do this in real life, but I'm gonna go also go half inch with this one, just like we did before. What that means is when I turn the front panel back on, you can see that these two components are kind of intersecting. We couldn't, we couldn't do that in real life. And this is later on gonna be the dovetail is gonna tie these two together. We're gonna worry about that a little bit later. But right now we are kind of like getting the boards to the right size and placed where we want them, like we would do in real life. So that was the right panel. Now let's go and do the left panel. So I'm gonna go and make that visible. Now there's nothing appearing on the screen because, well, we haven't sketched anything in the left panel yet. I'm gonna make that active. And now you will see that our front and right becomes transparent. Just gonna move around here and you can hold down shift in the middle mouse button and you can move around. I'm using what is called a space pilot to do that. Again, just like with the right panel, I'm going to go up and open up a new sketch to activate it. And I'm going to select on this face over here. It's going to go normal too. Again, S key for our sketch toolbox, two point rectangle. And I'm going to make sure again that I snap to the corner of the front panel. And then I'm going to snap to the opposite corner of the right panel we just created and automatically now everything is constrained you see everything turns black 
So we don't have to worry about any dimensions here. We're tying everything down. Now we're ready to use the press pull command again, but just like before, we're gonna go up and we're gonna hide those two other components. Hit Q and we're gonna press pull out. Now make sure you select both rectangles here and I'm gonna go again minus a half an inch. Now if I turn on the right and the front panel, you can kind of see we're getting the same instant as before that they're in a section, but we're kind of cutting the length of the boards. The last one is the back panel. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm gonna make that active. And then it doesn't really matter which one of those uh, right or left panel uh, bottom face we are selecting. I'm gonna select create sketch and select that face right there. It's gonna go normal too. And just like before, S key for the sketch toolbox, two point rectangle. And again, I'm just gonna make sure that I snap in to do two opposite corners that gets fully defined automatically. I'm gonna hide my three other components, hit the Q, press pull, and select these two rectangles, go minus and a half an inch there. Turn the components back on. And if I move the fish eye up to the top component up here, everything will appear like this. And now we have actually just taken our four components for the start of this draw, and we have created them in the right length and, and ready to kind of like start assembling. Now there's two things I wanna show you before I give you just a short break. One of them is a really neat tool when you're working within assemblies like this. If I go up to the inspect command and I go down to the bottom, there's something called component color cycling toggle. I click on that and you will see that all our components get a separate color. What is neat about this is, especially if you have a lot of components, is that now we can easily identify each component. You will see over here in the tree up here, we have the light blue is our front panel. And you will also see down in the history tree that the sketches and the extrusion that pertained with those different ones are color coded above. So it makes it a little bit easier to find. Now, the other thing that is important to know is that since this is an assembly, this is, you know, these different four boards collected, we need to make sure that they're kind of tied together. Now we did it with sketches, but each component is actually right now just floating in round in space. And we really don't want that. I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo my last four moves here. Now, if you are interested in learning more about joints and how to assemble things, check out the video uh, that I created on that down in the description. But if you're brand new to Fusion and this is kind of like you're working your way through this, don't worry about it. I'll just show you uh, what you need to know right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide that one of these components, the front panel in our case, is gonna be kind of like nailed down in space. So we're gonna go up to that front panel, we're gonna right click and we're gonna ground it. Hit ground and you will see we get a little thumb tag on the front panel. That means that right now the front panel cannot move. It's tied down in space. Now in theory, we could do that to the rest of the panels, but there is actually a very neat component up here called as built joint. We're gonna use that one instead. And that means that we are pretty much gluing the components together. So I'm gonna say the front panel that we just nailed in space and the right panel are as built joint. And that way, when I hit okay, I have now assured that these two components are tied together. I'm gonna do that with all of them. So I'm gonna right click and hit repeat as built joint, just to use the same command again. I'm gonna select the right and the back. Make those rigid. And then one more time, right click, repeat built as joint, and do the two over here. Now I have made sure that we have one, you can look down in the feature tree here, the first one, the front panel, that has been nailed and ground with a thumbtack and then the other one has built as joint down here. 
So if you just came from the absolute beginner video series and are now sitting at this point, I know that, like I said earlier, it might seem a little confusing the way we model everything up and tied it together. But let me just show you the power of this. If I go into our very first sketch and I right click and hit edit sketch, remember these? We had the five inches tall by 28. If I change this, for example, to 10, and go out of the sketch by hitting stop sketch, see how the three other panels followed that five turn to 10 inches. So this is the way that you can go in and with one dimension, you can completely change the draw outline. So this is really the power of parametric modeling how if you use sketch relations, how we built thing, these four panels together, it only takes one dimension to change all of them. So I just want you to think about that. Now let me go and change them back again. If nothing else, you saw the power of parametric modeling. I know you eventually will get there, even though that it might seem a little confusing now. Now, we're gonna take a short break, let you go and get a cup of coffee, maybe a cup of tea. Um, if it's after five, maybe a beer, whatever. Uh, and then when we come back, we are going to put a bottom in the drawer because without that, it really doesn't do much purpose. See you in a second.